a little bit about um, the digital prism. I mean, I know we've been talking about uh, uh, Clara, and I just want to understand, tell the audience about that, digital prism. The the digital prism is what we're marketing, um, what digital clarity does. Okay, okay. When you you decide to partner with digital clarity, the first Mm -hmm. thing we're going to do as partners of Clara and official Mm -hmm. resellers of Clara, we will Mm -hmm. install the Clara base engine where right. like us to, whether it be on mm-hmm. premise or in your cloud environment. Then mm-hmm. we will put the digital prism on top of Clara so that you have right. the ability to run the video analytics. It's simply uh, a way to differentiate Clara from the thing that digital clarity does. I understand. I understand. I understand. So talking about digital clarity, um, are you solely focused on video analytics? Is that what you, I mean, you've got a big market as I understand you just explained, but are you solely focused focused on video analytics? No, um, because we're partnered with Clara, um, mm-hmm. with sellers, there are, mm-hmm. you know, there, there may be opportunities where uh, people are not interested in necessarily video analytics because that is a mm-hmm. value add. So you can right. buy Clara without uh, the digital prism and we're still gotcha. able to help you implement and get the uh, data points that you're looking for. Okay, um, so I understand different situations would warrant different lead times, but yes. maybe just give me one example of something uh, just you know to, to base it upon in terms of the speed to value. I would be able to comfortably say that within two weeks, we would be able to solve most use cases. Wow, that is... Lightning speed for corporate. <laughs> That's yeah. really lightning speed. And, that and is when, really lightning speed. Warp speed. And, let's not, let's say warp speed. <laughs> and, and when Mike is factoring that in, you know, Mike mm-hmm. is taking into account because Mike comes from a very rich background of enterprise problems at scale. Right? Yes. Yeah. And that's where he's bringing that timeline into the picture. But when it comes to the video analytics itself, if you just take yes. a solitary a video stream, then right. that can be done literally in, in minutes, right? Because yes, as the system understand. processes the video, it starts to generate the outcome, right? Right. And then when you have, depending on the use case, as you rightly said, you can have anywhere from something that can solve within a day, right? Yeah. Depending on the nature of the data versus yeah. something very complex that can take up to two weeks, right? Gotcha. And when I say complexity and what Mike is referring to, you're talking about seven, eight different data sources coming right. from various or uh, departments within an organization and mm-hmm. factoring in the time that sometimes it takes to get connectivity to those data sources in and itself, right? Yes, I mean, imagine access. If, yeah, access, exactly. Now you're in a government <laughs> totally agency, no. yeah. right? And you're like yeah. the, let's say the CXO of the city uh, of mm-hmm. let's say Cincinnati, for example, now, right. getting data from law enforcement, you just don't pick up the phone and it comes <laughs> in minutes. No. <laughs> right? No. So there are Couple those challenges. <laughs> exactly. There are forms to be filled. There is IT security accesses, protocols to be dealt with. And yes. when you put that package together in a couple of weeks, you know, even though it's a complex use case, you can bring things together. Right? Exactly. I mean, let's be, to be fair to most solution houses, we know that the client is the one that usually is the biggest drag on the lead time. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and it's, it's procedures. more the processes that the clients yeah. have to deal with rather than the individual client is always excited because they want to see something right. now if they've bought something. Right. It's more right. about overcoming the internal barriers that they have to before they can see light at the end of the tunnel, right? Right. But, right. but just to put it in perspective, when data is freely available, access is not right. an issue. For example... Mike and his team were able to solve a social media analytics use case where data is out in the public domain for a Mm -hmm. university in a matter of an hour or less, right? Because they can literally take hashtags or, you know, Twitter handles or whatever that the university Mm -hmm. was dealing with and generate an outcome, right? Now, those are all best case scenarios. And then you have the other extreme. 
So, interesting, highly interesting. Now, I wanted to talk on a t- touch on one last point because we understand that it is a new and evolving area. We know how, who the formal pra- players are, like you said, in the surveillance space. But you did say that you're not the only one on the market. So I'm talking about in your space. So mm-hmm. how do you, you know, what is what makes you guys so much more unique than the competition? in this space? Um, well, I mentioned that uh, we don't have proprietary hardware. Okay. That's that's one thing. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, the, uh, certain companies may come to you and say, oh, we're going to land, we're going to give you this uh, set of servers that'll do all this other processing for you. And right. we have our cameras that will help come and hook up for you. And all it has is all this firmware going on. And then once they have it installed, they depending on the company, they may not be able to focus where you need to focus. So for example, um, we're able to pick up things that are ambient. So Mm -hmm. I see uh, behind you, you have a bookcase there. Whereas their solution may only be able to pick up your face. Ah, got you. Right. Um, There may be music playing behind you as you're speaking. We'll be able to pick up the music as well as what you're Mm. saying. It will only be you. what you're saying. So it's 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 the surroundings that bring the context to right. the interactions. Everything, all of these use cases that we're bringing out are about interactions. Got because you. that's really what it is. And without yeah. having the proper context, the interactions may be misconstrued. Exactly. And I mean, just, you know, as an avid data person, we're always talking about getting to the point of contextualizing the data, bringing it into context, having it rich and linked, and definitely with video and all the different elements around my head (laughs) right now um, in the background and in the background by you, you would want to, I mean, afterwards be able to analyze that and bring it into your insight bucket so that you would know all of those different elements. So that's very, very powerful. And uh, gentlemen, I want to say this has been a highly interesting conversation, uh, introducing the audience to an area, again, of even more data that we can curate and um, bring into the fold in terms of giving citizens, organizations, and individuals, and of course, governments, insights, and the ability to um, have truly actionable data from all sorts of different sources. So I want to thank you for your contribution uh, today. It's been highly exciting. Uh, 